Hello, everybody. Sebastian Lacido here, and welcome uh, to Five Minute Fresh Start. I'm in Psalm 22. Before I begin, um, Jesus uh, is, you know, naturally the most interesting man in human history, right? But the thing about Jesus is he was, his humanity was born in Bethlehem, but the Son of God always was. He was there in Genesis. He actually created everything. And so when he went to the crucifixion, and he went through his passion. He had wrote about himself in the Old Testament and wrote about how he was, how he would be thinking and what would be going on. So it wasn't, he knew what was happening to him. It was, he was very clear eyed when it came to that. And there was a point on the cross where God put all of our sins and our iniquities on him, all of our transgressions, everything poured on him. So he, when he was, you know, when he came to the crucifixion, and they were putting nails in his hands. He prayed for others on the cross. He, he, he took care of his mother. He took care of the thief next to him. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. But at one point, when God poured all of humanity's sins on him and transgressions and iniquities, and he became sin, Second Corinthians tells us he became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. At that point, it turned to him. We, we, and, and here in Psalm 22, we see not only the words, but what he was thinking there on the cross uh, as a man dying um, and, uh, and exposed and vulnerable. So verse one of Psalm 22 says a familiar statement, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So he screams this and roars this on the cross. He roared it. He, 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 he screamed it on the cross. Why have you forsaken me? That's how he felt. Why have you turned from me? Why have you left me? Why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far from helping me? <clears throat> so again, verse one says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you or are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Verse two, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and, and, and am not silent. And if you remember, it really got really dark on the cross. So there's daytime and nighttime. But he answers the question about why uh, he got turned away from him, why he felt forsaken, why God abandoned him. So he said, but you are holy. In other words, God could not follow him into this. He put all of his sins on him. It says, but you are holy, God. You're holy and you can't cohabitate with sin. I have become unrighteous in your eyes because of the sins of humanity. He said, but you are holy and throned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. Uh, they trusted and were delivered. You delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. And so he's, 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 he's saying, you know, you're enthroned in Israel. You're holy you know, uh, uh, your covenant people trusted in you and you delivered them. They cried and prayed to you and delivered them. But listen to his next words. He said, but I am a worm and not a man. This is how he's feeling on the cross. They all prayed to you and trusted you and got delivered. But I'm a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out their lips. They shake their heads saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. And it goes on all the way through to verse 18 where they divided my garments, right? And my tongue cleaved to the top of my jaw. They brought me as dust to death. So this is how the man Jesus was feeling at this point. You know, naturally, this is the cup. You know, when he said, let this cup pass, you know, let this cup pass away. This is the cup. It wasn't the beatings and the scourgings, and it wasn't the whipping or the ripping out of his beard or the putting of nails in his hands or hanging him naked on the cross. When God separated for him, from him from the first time in all of eternally, uh, eternity past to eternity future, this segment of time where God took my sins and your sins and put them on him, that pain was unimaginable for him. Being separated from God <coughs> and being made sin. And so th th this, this, this is sort of an unrighteous act. You know, God does everything righteously and holy, but he made him a substitute for you and me. And that pain, he had to 
he had to pay the price. In fact, Isaiah 53 says, God the Father seen the travail of his soul. So his soul was in travail saying, I'm a worm, I'm not a man, I'm a reproach, I'm despised. These people are ridiculing me. They're shooting their lips at me. They're shaking their head at me. You know, they trusted you and you delivered them. But, you know, I, I, I'm here, I'm exposed, I'm naked. I created these people. This pain is unimaginable. And so, you know, Jesus paid a very, very big price for us. And that's why we should be wholehearted toward him because he did it for us who are sinners. He did it for us who didn't believe in him. We despised him. We used his name in vain. But we, after we came to knowledge, we understood it. But he paid such a, such a great, great price. So through this Easter season, uh, as we approach the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, just keep in mind that he gave us this great life, but it cost. It cost something. Anyway, God bless you. Thanks for watching today. Please share this with family and friends. Please pray about becoming a partner with us in our endeavor to... Uh, uh, teach the word of God around the world and, uh, and to bring knowledge and understanding to God's word. And then please use us, use our materials. Anyway, God bless you guys. I love you guys. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you uh, for another episode soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks.